Hey again everybody. A bit behind on making videos again, and sorry for anyone trying to view the Staple Diffusion Concepts Example Gallery video. It encoded in some sort of weird augmented reality format, so I had to pull it down. I'll redo it and probably upload the entire 2000 image run in a single video. I've been trying out the new textual inversion training feature in the Gradio Stable Diffusion web UI and thought a video would be a good demonstration of just how easy to use it is, assuming you have supported hardware. As far as I know, you'll need at least 8GB of VRAM on an NVIDIA GPU for training, and of course you'll need to be using an updated version of the Stable Diffusion web UI. Today I'll go over selecting and processing images, and training and using a new embedding. I'll also be using Windows 10 for this one, but going through it on Linux is no different. Before getting started, I'd recommend skimming the wiki first because it covers the basics pretty well. But assuming you've done that, let's get moving. So over on the Textual Inversion tab, there's a bunch of new sliders and text boxes. Things are organized in a step-by-step -step manner, so we'll begin at the top and create a new embedding. Name is the token that's used to name and trigger your embedding. The initialization text is the initial phrase mapped to the embedding. As noted in the wiki, if the embedding is used with no training, the results will be the initialization phrase, or pretty close to it. The number of vectors per token is the size of the embedding. You can pass a total of 75 tokens in a prompt, and the embedding size will reduce this by whatever number is specified here. Theoretically, a larger embedding with more tagged images will give stronger output, but occupies more prompt space and requires more input images and more training. Theoretically, and to a point, and depending on image quality and tags, and planetary alignment, cosmic rays, tea leaves, incantations, along with a lot of trial and error. As noted in the wiki, 8 is probably a good starting point. After putting in your values, press create to create the new embedding file. For the dataset, I've gathered a few images of concept art from the cancelled Fallout Van Buren game. Creating generic post-apocalyptic concept art is a trivial task for Staple Diffusion, but I want to refine things a bit and really try to capture the retro future vibe. For quick image editing, I like to use IRFan View, and on Linux, I tend to use Krita, but I like to find a more lightweight alternative. It doesn't really matter what you use as long as you can crop, resize, and handle JPEGs. In terms of editing, the only thing I'm going to do here is crop out some of the borders. If the images you're providing here have watermarks, try to remove them, or you'll end up strongly reinforcing the creation of weird, mangled watermarks on anything you're creating using your embedding. I'll leave the rest of the pre-processing to some of the features in the GUI. Specify the input and output directories in the boxes. And then there are three options you can choose from. You can mirror the images to provide more data. This is particularly useful if you're using tags in the file names because it allows you to pass more tag data with essentially the same visual information. Split in two will attempt to create two images from input larger than 512 by 512 pixels. You can try to get a deeper embedding by using a variety of keywords associated with your images and passing them to the trainer using the image file name. Pre-processing images with the add caption feature will use the blip model to generate tags and add them to the output image file name, which will be used in the next step. If you look at the file names here, you'll see that they've been renamed with their keyword loaded descriptions. To increase the likelihood of success with your experiment, proofread the file names and rename anything that is poorly described. You don't really need to be too detailed here, sometimes only a word or two is way off. Train your embedding using the third section of the menu. Select your embedding created above from the drop down menu. The learning rate can be adjusted, but setting it too high will probably give you poor quality output. 0.005 is probably a good starting point, so it can be left alone. The dataset directory is the path to the set of images created by the preprocessing earlier, and the GUI will create a training log in the directory specified here. The prompt template file is used to generate variations of prompts. 
and the GUI will create training checkpoints and output test images every amount of steps specified here. There are two variations of the template files provided. If you've used the caption feature in pre-processing, using the style file words or subject file words templates will incorporate them into training. Subject file words would be best suited for objects and style file words would be best suited for people or art styles. After the options are set, hit train to begin. You can press interrupt to stop trading and if a checkpoint is reached, you can resume later by providing the same data set. Training speed depends on a lot of factors, but you can check up on the process by looking at the preview images. As you can see, the model picked up the style pretty quickly, but that's because it was trained on a lot of similar images. Here are a few examples of how the embedding can be used. A quick word or warning that I'll try to elaborate on in a later video. It's probably unsafe to be sharing Python pickle files with random strangers on the internet. Pickle files are the checkpoints created by the trainer. They're essentially little zip files of Python code, and it could be any code. Malicious pickle files can theoretically be made to execute payloads on a target machine. I don't know of any reports of this happening yet, but there hasn't really been a reason for a ton of people to be passing around machine learning models before. The Hugging Face Stable Diffusion Concepts Library does have some sort of malware scanning on their files, but I haven't come across anything for home users yet. If you know of any updates on this, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.